Many of my clients always ask, where should they start if they want to get into real estate investing? A lot of them will start talking about apartments and tenants, but is that really the starting point if you want to get into real estate investing? We'll get into that in today's video. Welcome back to your local realtor. If it's your first time here, welcome. If you're returning, I appreciate it, thank you. If you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe button and the thumbs up button. And let's get into the video. So you wanna get into real estate investing, but you're not sure where to start. A lot of my clients start talking about houses, apartment buildings, tenants, but is that really where we should start? What are your goals? What are the reasons you wanna get into real estate investing? A lot of people get into real estate investing because they wanna grow passive income and also grow their wealth. So if your goal is passive income, that's where we should start. I always ask, how much residual income do you need or do you want? Usually I'll get a blank stare or I'll get the answer of, you know, I never thought about that or I want a lot of residual income. This number is very important, so how do we come up with it? Of course, we have to start with another question. How much are your monthly expenditures? If the point of passive income is to make you financially free, then it should at least cover your monthly expenses, right? I've had this discussion with many people and I've come to realize everybody's different. Me personally, I've kept a spreadsheet of every expenditure since I bought my first home. I know every dollar coming in as well as every dollar going out. I know some people may just check their balance to make sure it's not at zero or they'll check their balance before they start writing their checks so they know where they're at. But the point is everybody's different. So if you're like me, go ahead, pull up your spreadsheet and let's get your monthly average. And if you don't have a spreadsheet, that's okay. We'll show you how to figure it out. So what bills do we pay every month? We have our mortgage or rent, water, gas, electric, cell phones, cable, internet, car payment, insurance, loans, uh, subscription services. Your mortgage or rent is probably consistent every month as well as your car payment and the other lo installment loans that you might have. So go ahead and write those down. Your utilities probably vary every month. So what I'd like you to do is get your monthly average over the span of a year. With most accounts being online today, that should be fairly easy to do. Once we add those up, we have a chunk of our monthly expenditures. Let's go over an example. Let's go with a mortgage payment of $875 a month. Let's say your car payment is $425 a month. Insurance payment of $125 a month. Cell phone, $115 a month. Your cable and internet bill is $175. Your electric bill is $125. Your water bill is $60. And your gas bill is $55. Your total would be $1,955 a month. So let's round that up to $2,000. So what is missing from this list? Our living expenses, our groceries, our gas, entertainment, you know, eating out. Your average family of two spends about $350 to $650 a month on groceries. Your average car owner in America spends about $250 a month on gas. We haven't even accounted for any subscription services like Disney Plus or Netflix. Did you account for your gym membership? A lot of these numbers are specific to your situation, so you need to figure them out on your own. But for the sake of this example, I'm going to use an additional $2,000 a month. This brings us to a total of $4,000 a month in expenditures. I would highly recommend building a buffer into this number, so let's say $500. So let's make our total for our goal of residual income of $4,500. Now we have a starting point. What do we do with this number? On average, most investors can conservatively cash flow three to $600 per door or unit. Let's assume that we can average $500 of cash flow per door or unit that we purchase. That means the person in this example would gain their financial freedom after purchasing nine properties that cash flow $500 per door. The great things about goals are we can change them. Let's say we get our goal of $4,500 a month and find out that it's not enough. Okay, let's go buy another property. What if we're averaging more or less per door? That's okay. We just adjust the number of units that we need to purchase. Once you achieve this number, what do we do? You have a couple of options. One, you maintain your current lifestyle. Go live life, retire, have fun. You don't need to go to work anymore. Or you can continue working and try to add a couple more properties to your portfolio to build your buffer even bigger. Maybe you wanna expand your lifestyle. The compounding effect of growing your portfolio truly is amazing. Let's say for example that it takes you two years to save enough money to purchase your first property. With the cash flow from your first property, maybe it'll take you a year and a half to purchase your second property. When you have two properties, trying to get your third property, maybe it only takes you a year. And as you can tell, the more properties you purchase, the more cash flow you'll have, and you should be able to get to your goals faster. 
There are different strategies to purchasing your first rental property, and we'll get into those in another video. Remember, the purpose of this video was to get you thinking about where to start on your journey to real estate investing. I hope you were able to get something out of this video, and if you did, please smash the thumbs up button, and if you haven't already, please subscribe. In the comments below, let me know if you're able to calculate how much cash flow you need to be financially free. How many units do you think you'll need to achieve that? But remember, you've already started your path to real estate investing. You're thinking about it and you're starting to plan for it.